It's a little lengthy, so please be patient with me. This statement is not meant to be a plea to stay in this position. We are here because apparently four council members have decided they will fire me today, and my intention is not to try to sway anyone's vote. My goal is to show the public why Shreveport can't keep young, talented professionals. You have not heard any council member speak negatively about my overall work performance, my skill set, the quality of the work I produce, or my professionalism. Instead, you've only heard baseless allegations of wrongdoing without so much as an ounce of evidence, all meant to be an assassina assassination of my character. Six months ago, five council members approved my confirmation because they were confident in my ability to do this job. Councilman Butcher or Talaferro didn't vote for me, but I gave them my word that I'd work for them as I would every other council member, and I have. Councilwoman Bowman told me I shouldn't do shit for them. However, I told her I would work as hard for them as I did for everyone else, and I kept my word. Anything I provide to all council members, they are included. And anything they've requested from me, I've provided. Neither of them can truthfully, t truthfully tell you anything differently. In fact, I have emails and recall multiple conversations with Councilman Telefero where he, where he has thanked me for my efforts, for me looking out for him, for providing him with necessary information, and for a job well done. Less than a month ago, after I was publicly humiliated for receiving a raise that I knew nothing about until after it had been given, Councilman Brooks came to my office and told me how great of a job I'm doing and how impressed he was with my knowledge and ability to promptly respond to council members anytime any of them has a question. So imagine my surprise this past Friday when he asked the deputy, deputy clerk to add my employment status to the council agenda because he intends to fire me. He nor my other employers had the courtesy to come to me with any of their issues before going public. I even called each of them in hopes of finding out what the problem was because no one has spoken to me. Council members Brooks, Busher, Telefero, and Bowman did not answer nor any of them have did not answer nor have any of them returned my phone call. I'd also like to add that since the day I started, not one of my bosses has given me any sort of counseling, performance review, or verbal or written warning of any sort, yet they are moving to fire me. I can't help but think this termination is the result of a series of instances where I either spoke out against something I didn't agree with or rejected invitations that I believed were inappropriate. Around the time that I was confirmed, I attended a dinner where Councilwoman Bowman allowed Councilman Brooks to say the word nigga. I gave him pushback in that moment and let him know that it wasn't okay for him to use that word. Yet Councilwoman Bowman said nothing. There was also another council member and his wife present. The other council member stated he didn't hear it, but his wife did, and she was so upset that she left. When I later questioned Councilwoman Bowman about why she remained silent, she told me he was a different type of white guy, and she wasn't going to say anything because she may need him later. I guess she was right because she was able to convince him to take lead on firing a young black woman so that she wouldn't have to be the face of it. Prior to that, Brooks had told me that black women like him Black women like him, and other white men can't get away with the same things that he could with black women. In that same conversation, he told me he hardly ever comes to the council office, but now that I'm working here, he may come more often. I blew off his comments initially, thinking maybe he had too much to drink. But after hearing him say the N-word, I knew he thought he could say and do whatever he wanted. After this, any time Councilwoman Bowman asked me to join her and Councilman Brooks for drinks, I declined. When Councilman Brooks texted me past work hours asking me if I was home or getting out tonight, I did not respond until the next morning. When he asked me on multiple occasions to join him at his bar for steak and drinks, I always declined. I also didn't accept Councilwoman Bowman's invitation when she asked me to go to Dallas with her and Councilman Brooks, stating she was going to make him take us shopping. It's clear that at one point these council members were fond of me. In fact, Councilman Brooks was so comfortable with me. Quiet the noise, please. In fact, Councilman Brooks was so comfortable with me that he told me he previously that he told me he was previously in business with a young black man who he knew was a drug dealer, but he didn't care because he was making money off of the young man. He told me the only reason he cut ties with the young man is because he received a heads up that the young man was being investigated by the feds. I told him nothing about that was okay, and I guess that what, that's what privilege does for you. Mm. 
Likewise, the last time Councilman Brooks asked me to create legislation for him, he told me he wanted me to draft an ordinance that he knew would only affect, affect Club Hayes and piss them off. I told him he probably shouldn't intentionally create something that he knows will target and negatively impact one business, especially since he's a business owner himself. I subsequently spoke with the city attorney's office about the proposed legislation. He never came to me for legislation again. It seems Councilman Brooks' opinion of me may have changed because he doesn't like to be challenged or rejected. However, I will never apologize for speaking out against something I know is wrong. I also won't compromise my standards and integrity by engaging in what I believe is inappropriate behavior just to please someone, even if that someone is my boss. Councilwoman Bowman has been vocal about her disapproval of me speaking with RJ about his job performance. She has a problem with me speaking directly to him about his work, yet she was okay with telling me how messy his clothes look, how bad his hygiene is, how he acts like a female at times, and how she knows he just sits in his office and does nothing. I never commented on these, com these statements when she made them, but instead I made it very clear to her that any issue I have with RJ will be strictly based on his job performance, not anything petty or personal. The only reason I bring these things up now is because it appears I am being punished because I didn't go along with everything these council members have said or done. I'm being professionally punished for personal reasons. In the past month, multiple people have told me that they've asked Councilwoman Bowman what her problem is with me, and her response has been, I just don't like that bitch, with no other explanation. Despite knowing this, I've continued to be nothing but professional towards her, respecting her as I do any of my employers. However, it is apparent to me that people in positions are leader, in, of leadership are allowing personal feelings, pride, and even race to get in the way of what's right. I've been accused of having an overinflated ego. I suppose that is because I have an opinion. I don't just sit down, shut up, and take whatever people try to feed me. And because I walk around with my head high even when some people do all they can to tear me down, I unapologetically use my voice. As the founder of a nonprofit in this city, I have young girls who look like me growing up in similar circumstances as I did who count on my voice because at times it's the only voice they have speaking up for them. If you knew my story and what I went through to get to where I am today, maybe you would understand why I walk and talk the way that I do. I don't know why my confidence intimidates or offends certain people, but I will not shrink myself to make others around me feel more comfortable, nor will I ever apologize for being secure in the gifts God placed inside of me. I love Shreveport and I love working for this city, but as I stated before, I'm not begging to stay in this position. Today, my goal is simply to lay out the facts for the public and let you all draw your own conclusions as to why you think these council members are now pushing for me to be fired. Each council member must decide what side of this you want to be on and vote with your conscience. To so those council members who have continuously supported me and believe in my abilities, ability to help make Shreveport a better place, thank you. Serving under your leadership has been a true honor. Thank you. Thank you. Would you please be quiet? At this time, we call for the uh, for the vote. Motion passes four to three for the firing of Miss Fleming. Executive session, there are none. If nothing else to come before this body, we stand adjourned.